What is up, everybody? It's Mike Ferrante with Century 21 here in Cleveland. I have another episode of Best Advice Ever. And today, those of you who are part-time agents working another job and want to hear about how someone else successfully transitioned from working the J-O-B to being a really successful real estate agent, stay tuned. everybody here we go another episode of best advice ever if you want to hit me up it's mike at 21mike.com and let me introduce my very special guest today it is david jimenez from the denver area uh, parker colorado right david that's correct yes awesome thank you so much for being here yeah i'm glad to be here Okay, so we have a bunch of stuff to unpack, uh, partially what I led with, that whole story about how you started in a retail job, and now yeah. you're killing it in real estate, uh, doing 40, 50 deals a year, and uh, you're managing broker where you are. And on top of that, we're going to touch briefly on how you're now a coach with the Tom yes. Ferry organization, how we met, which is really cool. So yeah. tell us a little bit about your business in your own words. I did an okay job introducing you, but lay it on Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Yeah, so I've uh, been in real estate for nine years now. Um, I'm a Denver native and uh, mostly, you know, kind of 70% of our business is generated from our sphere of influence. And then we also have a 5,000 home farm that we that we generate the other 30% from. So like, uh, like you alluded to, we do somewhere between 40 and 50 deals a year, um, which is, you know, which is comfortable for us. I've got three daughters that also need my time and, and a wife that probably wants some time as well. So it, uh, you know, it's, it's the appropriate amount of business that allows me to have, you know, great business, but great time for the family and be a TF coach on the side as well. Amazing. So uh, that's one of the things a lot of agents struggle with is <clears throat> finding that balance. You know, st do I have to work 80 hours a week to become successful in real estate? And the answer is no, you don't have to. And I'm sure we'll touch on that a little bit. Uh, but I want to get right down to um, like sort of the first question is you've built this successful business, 40, 50 deals a year. You're, you're a small shop. It's not like you have this massive team, great price point in your area. Obviously you're yeah. doing really well. Um, can you t talk about like what made you become successful and how the heck did you go from retail to being this successful real estate agent? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the background is I was I worked for Target for 12 years once I got out of college. And as anybody can imagine, retail is a very demanding job, right? That's a 24-7 business now. And when I was there, we were just transitioning to the, we'll call it the Amazon model, right? The, the ship from store, all of the, you know, shop for you as you go. And uh, so you know, my average day was six to four, you know, seven to 5 p.m. And at the time I knew, you know, two little kids that I didn't want to be in retail forever. It wasn't sustainable, you know, from November 1st till January 1st, I didn't exist for my family, right? I mean, I was, I was a retail monster for 60 days working nonstop. And so in fall of, in October of 2014, I decided to get my license. I had a really great mentor, which, um, you know, I'll, I'll touch on kind of the importance of that, but got my license, did an in-class, in-person in-class. And at the same time, I also took a Keller Williams bold class. So unlicensed agent taking bold while working holiday retail. So give you a little context of kind of the demands of, of all that. Oh, and there's a family, right? So, um, so I did that and, you know, to me, that that was so important in terms of my long-term success because I learned how important it was to have discipline in your time, right? Because one of the challenges I think most people new to real estate struggle with, right, is the the expansiveness of your day, right? If, if you go full-time right out of the jump, that's a lot of time to fill. In nine, eight, nine hours, you know, you, you can let that wash away real fast. And I didn't have that, right. I had two to three hours a day to really be intentional, to make the phone calls, to do the follow-up, to do showings, whatever it was. 
Um, and so I think for me, that was probably a blessing in disguise, right, is to, to start that job on the side, build it for two years, and then be prepared to go full time. So that way, when I went full time, not only did I have some income, but I also knew what it took to generate more deals. Gotcha. Gotcha. So again, I think there's a lot of agents out there who are like you and me. Yeah. I, you know, I had the same thing. I was at a construction job. And after about two and a half years, I got licensed. And just similar to your story, one of the phrases you use that intrigues me that I'd love for you to elaborate on is you said, because you had limited time, you had to be very intentional with your time. Mm -hmm. Talk about that because, you know, we hear time blocking and we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's just one of those buzzwords. Tell yeah. us what it means to have been intentional with your time. Yeah. So, I mean, again, in a retail schedule, I mean, your store is open. You you don't have time to just pull out your phone and, and dilly dally, you know, you're, you're working from the minute you get there. You know, I was supporting somewhere between 30 and 50 people on any given day. So it's not like, it's like I could sit in my office, right? Retail is a face-to-face is -face business. And so I had to start every day looking at where is real estate going to take place? If, if my motivation was to be full time, the only way to get there was to set aside time every day to do that. So if I work six to four, then I knew from four to six, I had to do real estate activities. If I worked two to 10, then I knew from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., I had to do my real estate activities. And so it was my mindfulness, right? My intention to do that. And then it also had to translate to the clients. Hey, you know, client calls or text, we want to talk about such and such. Well, I'm not in a position to break off for, you know, potentially 20, 30 minutes in the middle of the day. So I have to set that schedule, right? Well, how about we talk at 4.30? How about we talk at 1.30? And to your point, right, one of the things that we get into, we, we, you know, new agents start to believe is that they just have to be ready in the moment, right? Like someone calls like, oh my God, they're calling me right now. I can't miss it. And what I learned, you know, was forced upon me was that they were calling when it worked for them. And I had to call back when it worked for me and we had to find a joint time. Right. So that allows you that confidence over time to learn that, like, nobody was like, you're not answering my phone call. How dare you? I'm never working with you again. Right. But our mindset when we're new is like, oh my God, right. That FOMO. And so it was really helpful for me to see that that didn't happen. Right. No one, no one judged me for feeding my family and having a job. They, they appreciated what I was trying to do, right? That they they were supportive of that, right? And understanding. Yeah. It's not like I hid that I worked at Target, but I didn't make an excuse for it either. Yeah, and, and I think, and wouldn't you say that the clients who would judge you and say, oh, no, I expect you to call me back within five minutes. That's not probably, yes. that's not your client anyway, right? Yes, yeah. And, and, that's, and that's harder as a new agent, right? You're so focused on building this business and, We've all done it, right? When we're new, we all take on the client that we we know we shouldn't have, right? We, we knew from the jump that our gut told us this is going to be a problem. Um, but the question is, can you can you learn from that and, and not take them in the future, right? We're all going to do it once or twice. It's, it's unavoidable. But, right, you you learn or, or you don't learn that, like, it's okay to say no. You're not, Tom's really great about this, right? You shouldn't be everything to everyone because then you can't be the right things for the right people. And I, and I learned that, right. I was so grateful to learn that lesson, right. Yeah. Early on. Find your tribe. Those are his famous words, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah and of course, absolutely. We're, and, and, and of course we're talking about Tom Ferry. We're both in the coaching program and, yeah. you know, we'll definitely hit you being a coach, which fascinates me. Um, so nine years in the business, but the first couple years part-time yeah. uh, as we've been talking about, um, I'd like you to give one more piece of advice. And remember, guys, we're culminating to best advice ever. Dave is going to save his huge gold nugget for the end. But talk about how you handle that conversation. That um, so, so you made it transparent that you were part time. Um, I know that a lot of agents are afraid to do that or or they um, purposely don't share that information. So in hindsight, do you think it was um a good idea to be totally upfront with people about that? Or do you try to skirt the issue and kind of it's none of their business that you're part-time, you're available when you're available? 
Oh, I, I am a major advocate of, you know, vulnerability and transparency, right? So I'm of the belief that had I tried to dance that delicate, you know, I'm, I'm doing this full time or kind of, you know, hide potentially what my days look like, that I would have lost some trust. I would have lost some of their desire to support me. I was very transparent around what I was trying to build, mm -hmm. right? And so I was, it was twofold, right? I was introducing my new venture and, you know, planting that seed of I'm, I'm in real estate now. I have my license, but I'm also telling people this is, this is what I want to do. This isn't, you know, a little bit of side money. This is where I want to go. So I'm taking it serious and I need your support. Uh, and I think people, I mean, we could all appreciate that. We want to support those people who are trying to, to do more and do better. Um, and as long as you continue to validate that that's what you're doing, right? If you take a professional approach and you communicate and you do what you need to do for their needs, they're going to support you. So I, yeah, I, you know, taking bold at the very, before I even have my license, right? I mean, I'm calling people without a license saying, hey, just a heads up, I'm getting my license, right? So in the future, if you, if you have any real estate needs, and my first three deals came in those conversations before I had my license, you know, working, you know, doing all this, right? I call people and they go, that's great to hear because, you know, early next year or next month, or, you know, we definitely want to buy and we'd love to help, you know, we'd love to work with you. I don't get those deals. If I don't put that out there. Oh my God. Amazing. I want to give you the virtual high five here because <laughs> right. that that's an amazing story. So I didn't warn you I was going to do this, but I'm going to put you on the spot and I want to role play something with you real quick. Yeah. So uh, yeah, David, I, I mean, I like you, I think you're a great guy, but you know, now that I know you're only available part-time, I'm concerned as a buyer that yeah. the market moves quickly and, you know, how are you going to be able to serve me as your buyer in this hot market if you're just a part-time agent? Yeah. So, you know, I definitely appreciate it. It's, it's not that I'm a part-time, right? It's that I, my time is, you know, committed to multiple things. So to bring you some confidence, I have a mentor who's been in the business for 15 years, right? So she, her and I talk every day. She's consistently supporting me on the market and all the knowledge. And in moments if I'm not available and you need to, you need to go see a property, I'm going to have her available to show you. So yes, you're working with me and I'm your primary resource, but just know that like in any moment in time, if you need something and I'm not necessarily available. I've got multiple people that are willing to step in and take care of you. I love that answer. So for two years, that's what you did. And then for the next yeah. seven, you're crushing it as a, as a full-time uh, agent. Uh, let me give you the, this kind of the second question on our list, which is, you know, what has made you successful? So you were in the beginning part-time, um, very intentional with your time. You you had a mentor uh, from there and maybe talk about the mentor a little more because that's always my best advice yeah. ever is don't do it alone. Get somebody, yeah. a coach, a mentor. But, you know, what has made you successful from that point forward? Yeah, I think, again, it, it piggybacks off of, of that experience. And so I... I learned two things early on, which is people, you know, my, in my real estate class, one of the, probably the, the number one thing I remember is the guy saying, you can't be a closet agent, right? You can't be in the closet and be a realtor. Like they don't work together. People have to know you're in real estate. So I heard him say that, then I take bold, I make the phone calls and I, and I got the I got that correlation right away, right? Make a phone call, get a deal. Make a phone call, get a deal. I'm like, well, this is how it works. This is what I'm going to do. Um, so that, that was a blessing. But but the second thing was, to your point, like I didn't want to know every. I knew I didn't know everything. So I wasn't going to pretend I was this. I mean, I took my mentor to my listing appointments. I took my mentor to my buyer appointments. Like, I'm not going to sit here and sound stupid or look dumb or or lie to them or pretend I'm going to bring somebody who's got all the credibility in the world. I've got the relationship. So I think that that was, that was a huge piece, right? Is that she was there. I could always call and ask her, Hey, I'm gonna write this contract. Tell me how bad it is. Right. You know, Hey, this is what's happening in the transaction. This is what's wrong on inspection. And so, you know, 
again, there's so much to learn, right? Not only just like the actual industry stuff, but relational and navigating agents. I mean, so many human components. Having that mentor was, again, I'm not here today if I didn't have a mentor because I think that backstop, there's just nothing, there's nothing that compares to it, right? It's why people get a coach, but even a coach can't quite deliver what a local mentor can, right? Because I don't know your contracts, right? Like I can't, if I'm coaching you and you're new to the industry, I can't tell you section 14, do this instead of that, right? Your local mentor, that's what they're there for. They're there to say, boom, boom, boom. And again, you got to pick the right mentor, right? They, they can't just want it, the name or they can't want that role without the actual willingness to be there in the moment because this happens quick. Yeah. Uh, to your earlier point, uh, you call them or they call them closet agents. We call them secret agents. That's the yeah. other term I've heard. So don't be a secret yeah. agent. And and also mentors can change over time. You may need a certain type of mentor in the beginning, someone in the middle of your career, someone later in the career, and you may have multiple mentors, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there, there there's never really a time that you shouldn't have a mentor, I think in that sense, right? You know, mentor, coach, whatever the terminology, but because you, you're you always not going to know what you don't know until you get to that next level. And someone's got to bridge that gap for you, right? So going from new to a few deals, that mentor might look different. Going from 20 to 40 might look different. You know, hiring somebody, starting a team, that those mentors all have, you know, a certain place in your life. And so, um, but yeah, for, for me, that learning how to be disciplined with my time, working, you know, real estate and retail full time, when I got into, when I finally left and said, all right, January 1 of 2018, I'm full time. Here we go. I I knew what my priorities were. I didn't have to sit back and go, how do I feel the day, right? Well, let me scroll Facebook for a little bit. And, you know, let me check my emails that no one knows to send me an email in, right? Like, I didn't have any of that. I knew what activities were the highest and best use. So fast forward, now you are a successful agent in Denver metro area, 40, 50 wow. deals a year. Um, talk for a second about your decision to uh, be who you are, this successful solo agent and not going the route of mega team, you know, the, because I think a lot of agents get stuck in that, David. They yeah. they think, oh, in order for me to be successful, I have to have this, this team. A and you don't, that's not true, right? Right. Yeah, no, I think you have to you know, again, that self-awareness is what is it you really want, right? You know, you got to look and say, is that what I really want? Or is that what I think people want me to see me have, right? And, you know, I guess luckily for me, I have, I've always had that kind of self-awareness that I'm not, I'm not feeling pressure from anyone else. I'm not saying, you know, oh, they think I should, or, you know, man, he's doing, you know, this many deals and he's got a team. I, I'm looking at, you know, what, what I need, what my family needs, what I want for my quality of life. And, everything I do is from that. So, you know, could we do more deals? Absolutely. But going back to that point, right, is we don't want to be everything to everyone. So, you know, we want there to be a little bit more of a personal relationship. We want there to be some history there. So yeah, we don't, we don't take every deal. Um, but, but that brings me that peace of mind when I turn my phone off at, you know, when I, when I shut it down at 6pm, I'm okay with that. Right. That's so powerful. That's so powerful because I think a lot of agents are drowning. If if you ask agents, I think one of the definitely top 10 things they ask is how can I maintain some kind of work-life balance? And I think the words you use, the self-awareness, you know, yeah. I think that's incredible. Um, and, and just add to that, right? <clears throat> one of the things, you know, in, in the Tom Perry coaching, when I get a new agent is quickly and often, I remind them, just tell your clients what your boundaries are. They They don't care. They, they truly, they just need to know, right? It's no different than Chick-fil-A being closed on Sunday. Like, is there? there's millions of people that would love to go there on Sunday, but they're not protesting on Sunday morning, like, how dare you not open, right? They're not, they're not knocking on the window, right? It's okay. They just, because Chick-fil-A says, this is what we're doing. This is what this day is for. We'll see you Monday morning. Oh my God. I love that. That That is right. going all over. That's going to be a, a 30 second right. snippet. Yeah. yeah. Love that. I, I use Chick-fil-A all the time, right? In my coaching conversations because right, everyone knows Chick-fil-A. We've all been there. Right? If you've got kids, you go there way more than you need to, right? It's it's like a college fund, but right. It's, it's the whole thing. 
right? They have boundaries and everybody respects them because they're clear and transparent about them. As an agent, it's the same thing. I'm like, just tell people at 5 p.m., I've got to go to the gym. I'm going to sit down with my husband. I'm going to play with my kids. I'm going to, they're like, great. I love it because you know what it does for the client? This is the piece that I think a lot of realtors don't appreciate early on. The client needs to know when they got to fit in this attention, right? They need to know when they need to read the emails. They need to know when they need to ask the questions. They need boundaries as much as you need the boundary, right? Because someone works a long day. If they think they can email you back at 8 p.m. or call you at 8 p.m., then they're, then that's what their brain does, you know? So, like, I, I think it's so important. I always just go, like, oh, you know what? Call your doctor right now and just see if you can get them on the phone. Call your dentist and see if you can combine an hour for your teeth cleaning. It doesn't work that way. And you're not that's up right. to sync. Yep, yep. I That visual is forever burned in my mind now. People knocking on the window on right? Sunday at Chick-fil-A. I love it. <laughs> So you're sharing this with your new clients. Let's change the conversation over to coaching. So you started out as this retail guy who said, I'm going to build a real estate business. You're now a full-time agent. You've been successful now uh, nine years in and you're coaching. I think that as a coaching client, <clears throat> there's this sort of mystique. Oh my gosh, you're 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 a coach. You're this guru. <laughs> you're sitting on some mountaintop doling out uh, gold nuggets. Right. But I'm sure that I'm building it up a little bit more than it is. But, Very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, t- talk a little bit about what it's like to be a coach and to be a coach with the number one coaching platform in the world. Yeah, I mean, so I I got introduced to Tom Ferry by becoming a client, right? And um. So just kind of seeing the the ecosystem and and just kind of, I, in retail, like my passion was always developing the next leader. So that's, you know, that's what I loved about retail. I loved having a big team. I loved helping people go from point A to point B in their career. So when I left that and I went into real estate, I'm by myself. So I always had that void. And when I was in the ecosystem and I'd asked my coach at the time, like, what did it take to get on your side of the screen, right? And she, luckily she made the intro. <clears throat> but for me, yeah, it's not, I'm not parsing out, you know, incredible wisdom. I wouldn't say like I'm I'm a very green coach relative to some of the, you know, the crazy experts in, in this ecosystem in the coaching body. But um, I think for me, I just love being able to pour back into people, right? I mean, everybody needs kind of that, that, champion in their corner that reminder that confidence um so you know again get new agents get you know agents at all phases right and i think for me i just get so inspired i'm my bucket is filled my cup is filled by being able to help other agents make that step right whatever that step is it's you know it's specific to each one of them but that's that's what i love about it right because then i'm that much better when i when i jump off that call with them I'm that much better in my day in my business. Yeah, I think that's um, a, a good inspiration. You know, I know that uh, when I was at some events, you know, I've been with the Century 21 brand since I started. And I remember being in the seats and looking up on stage, for example, and saying, oh, wow, look at them. You know, I'll never attain that type of su- success. Or at some point I started saying, you know what, maybe I can, you know, maybe. And, and then that became a goal. Um, you know, I think that's that, that's really cool. And and hearing that story, I, I hope in, inspires people. Um, so before we get to best advice ever, I just want to kind of throw it out there. Is there anything we missed? Anything else you want to share before we get to that massive gold nugget at the end? Yeah, don't build it up too much. Um, no, I, I do just I think, um, you know, the, the perception about becoming a real estate agent, you know, for a lot of people is misguided, right? So it's, they see the price point and they see the paycheck or they think about the freedom and you, I'm sure you get more, way more calls like this than I do, but it's the whole, Hey, I'm thinking about getting my license. What should I know? Right. And I think it's, um, everybody can be successful. It's what's your willingness to be disciplined. Uh, it's really comes down to like, do you like solving problems? Right. Do you like being a, I don't even know if I'd call it a sounding board, right? But do you like being the, you know, where everybody targets their frustration, their anger and their stress? Can you bear that burden? Yeah. You know, can you, 
can you put boundaries on your time so that you're not working 24 seven because right you quickly it's very easy right it's very easy to let it bleed into everything right and your mind your time your family your relationships and then what it's not worth it um yeah. so yeah i think that's you know just something for anyone considering it it's there it, it can be wonderful right you can build it as something incredible but it's it doesn't it, that's not how it starts. No one that started real estate would ever tell you that's how it starts. Yeah, and it starts with a conversation like this. My wife right now is watching a million dollar listing. I think it's called, yeah. and I'm like, take these shows <laughs> off the air. This is not what it's really like, guys. This is like a tenth of a tenth of a percent of what our business is like. That that is not reality. Um, you're uh, so the, the 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 whole point about structure and discipline. I think those those are great points. I mean, that could be our gold nugget. So if you've got something to add on to that, um, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and switch gears. So so the best advice ever here, um, it, it, it's not necessarily an earth shattering thing, but it's the the way I usually phrase the question, David, is if you had to uh, give one piece of advice to a new struggling agent or you know to someone who wants to get to the next level, whether they're uh, forty agents and they want to grow a, a a team like I have, whatever it is, lay it on us to. Uh, today right now best advice ever yeah to me i, I think again it, this is a very simple business um and i think tom does a great job of conveying that in, in all the things that he does but your success in this business is always in direct correlation to the amount of exposure that you're getting so if you're making one call a week then that's the level of exposure that you're business can work from. If you're making five calls, if you're doing one video, if you're doing one email, it doesn't matter, right? And that's the the biggest resistance that most, you know, agents are fighting day to day is, oh, I don't want to make the phone call. I don't want to post the video. And you have to choose your heart, right? If you want to be successful, this is what it requires. I mean, you know, there, there's no... There's no other equation, right? No other, no agent is out there, gets their license and their phone starts ringing. It, I, I would reckon to say it's never happened. Agreed, you know, yeah. So that, that, that to me is what it comes down to. Every time I get a new agent, you know, our first conversation, you know, in the coaching is, or even when I'm mentoring them locally, right? It's a, it's a conversation of how willing are you to put yourself out there to be uncomfortable? And if there's hesitation, I, I go right at the point. Like, that's okay. If you can't grow your willingness to be uncomfortable and put yourself out there, your business is going to be hard capped. There's no fixing that. Yeah, it's a, there's a direct correlation between those efforts, those real estate activities and the success that you're going to have. And it doesn't necessarily equate to number of hours you work. It's it's the number no. of phone calls. It's the number of videos. By the way, guys, we've been flashing David's uh, contact info on the screen periodically here. Uh, do like I did. Uh, I checked out David's social. He practices what he preaches. I saw you're like consistently posting video, right. David. I think that's awesome. And I bet that's a huge reason for uh, much of the success that you've had as well. Um, so so please follow him. Check out what he's doing. And like we say in, in the Tom Ferry ecosystem, rip off and duplicate. You know, take some of the ideas that you've put out there and customize it to your personality, your market. Um any any last thoughts on that? I, I mentioned the videos and I'm sure you're proud of what you do of those efforts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it again, I, I'm somebody that I don't I don't love creating them any more than probably most people do, right? But I again I understand what they do. Um and to your point, like practice what you preach. When I you know, I think of a couple of people that like one girl is fresh out of college and I just said, hey, your best route at your age is to just post a video a day for 30 days and then be consistent. <laughs> and right, fast forward. So she's now 18 months in and she's she's doing 20 deals plus a year wow. at 24, you know, fresh out of college, you know, had a had an accounting job that she could lead because her business took off. And 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 again, that was with 100 percent certainty I can tell you that was a direct result of posting consistently. Maybe not every day, right? But instantly people were like, hey, I saw you. I'm supporting you. I'm thinking of you. Um, so I would tell everybody if you're, whether you're new or struggling, sit back and really look at 
how many people a day, a week, a month see and hear from me? That's going to directly correlate to if you have any deals now or in the future. Best advice ever. Love it. And it's interesting. Each person I talk to has something a little different to offer. So, right. you know, David, if you ever have a chance, you know, listen to some of ours. Uh, it's funny. I'm mentoring a new newer agent right now. And the first thing I told her was, I can't find you on Zillow or Realtor.com. Build out your profiles. That's a no brainer. And do you know yeah. the following week she calls me up, Mike, my success story for the week is I got two phone calls off of those profiles. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's awesome. But that's not going to happen every week. You know that, yeah. right? Like, start there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the universe, right? That's the universe validating why you need to be there and a bunch of other places, right? It, it's the universe saying, okay, you know, you're rewarded for doing this. It's not going to happen every day, but yeah. it's the same thing with social, right? Client posts a video or a couple of days and then someone calls and they go, oh, it only took me three videos. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that was just the universe kind of giving you a little nudge of like, stay consistent and there's more of this to follow. Yeah, we we like our uh, workout and restaurant analogies, and one I like is your push-ups. You can't do push-ups for three days and expect to have a fit uh, body. You got to keep doing them. Keep <laughs> yeah, doing the push-ups, guys. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, David. So much good stuff today. I'm gonna have a million little little chopped up segments here that we're gonna throw out there. And please, guys, follow David. Uh, his his contact info's here. Real quick, just so we can have it verbally too. If people want to reach out to you regarding real estate needs in the Denver uh, area, how do we get a hold of you? Yeah, um, my phone. You can call my cell. Text me 303-517-0345. My email is david at gerhomes.com. You can find it on our website, um, but yeah, reach out. I mean, I'm local. If you need help here, obviously if you have clients, but also if you just, you know, if you want a sounding board, again, I love pouring into people, so I'll never turn that phone call away. That's so so generous. I knew this was going to be uh, a great episode. So thank you so much for spending the time. Yeah. And again, if you guys want to uh, reach out to me or you need David's contact info, you guys know you can always email me, mike at 21mike.com. So wrap up another episode here. Thanks again, David. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a good day.